parts or composites as they call them, a lower composite and an upper. Mm -hmm. So you can see on the screen the second stage, the main core stage, the EPC, uh, which is a triathlete stage. Uh, up the EPC you have the last stage, EAC, which is uh, pretty much the size of a small studio apartment and we're going to put the spacecraft into the final orbit. And uh, up on this, you have uh, the fairing, inside whom uh, we have um, two prestigious passengers, nice it's Parasat 1A and Kurosat 6, which are tucked away. Night beginning to fall here at the CSG, which happens to be the world's only dedicated commercial space base, the Varian Space operating the launcher family, which is soon to grow with the addition of Soyuz and Vega, that's just next year. Now we mentioned that in the final uh, moments of final countdown is one of the key moments. There are two others that concern the weather that took place seven hours ago and uh, four and a half hours ago. Weather checks. We can go in all weather except uh, high altitude winds apparently. Rain is no problem. No, rain is not a problem and we are uh, in the rainy season right now. Today it was sunny. Uh, as you mentioned, we do need to monitor other things like the strength and uh, direction of high altitude winds. And this is why uh, we had a red yesterday because of the uh, high altitude winds. Uh, we also have to uh, monitor convective clouds and the storms in order to avoid any risk from lightning. We looked at the launcher. We're going to look inside the fairing at the satellites now. You can see the upper passenger, his Passat. The upper passenger is separated first, and it is usually, not always, but usually the heavier satellite. It is the case tonight, 5.3 tons, as you can see there. And if you keep on going with your extra glasses, you can see the lower passenger, Corsat 6, inside uh, this black box that we call the Silla 5A, and which allows uh, IM-5 to have a double launch. We are lifting 8 tons tonight, 5.3 tons for Hispasat and 2.7 tons for Koreasat, and uh, only possible of course, with the heavy lift area in five, the only commercial launcher capable of lifting two big passengers. We are coming up on the two-minute mark, and you'll hear the DDO call out the two-minute mark and then the one-minute mark. And uh, one of the last things that, that you're going to see before liftoff is the propellant feeder arms. This is a split-screen shot of them. Liquid hydrogen on the left, liquid oxygen on the right there feeding this very cold cryogenic propellant into the upper stage and when we pull about you'll, you'll get a better shot of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to give you some numbers, you know those fluids are extremely cold. Liquid hydrogen is about minus 240 degree and liquid oxygen about minus 160 degree. And you know it's hot and humid over here. You have fluids which are extremely cold and this is why we need to fill the tanks until the last possible moment, otherwise you would evaporate. All right, the last possible moment for you. We're coming down on a minute. Samir is going to head out. Do you still want to go out on the balcony? Yes, I'm still up. All right, he's never seen a launch from here, folks. So he's going to go out on one of the two terraces on either side of uh, Jupiter here. And uh, when he comes back after liftoff, we'll have some impressive... Atos de radio, attention pour moins une minute. We'll have his uh, impressions. Some fresh feelings. Hot, makes for some good radio comments. Stop. Moins une minute. All right. you soon, Josh. Okay, enjoy it. Don't get lost now. Try and find your way back. The uh, ignition sequence, we're into the final 60 seconds. Other people in the, uh, the United States, the invited guests here making their way out to the uh, terraces as well. You see the yellow bars right in the center of the screen. Those are the feeder arms we talked about. At minus five seconds, the DDO will be calling out 10, 9, 8, 7. When he gets to five, that's sank, of course, in French. Those arms will pull back. Watch for that, because that starts the entire process. At zero, you'll hear allumage, which is ignition, and then you'll see the main engine light, but we don't lift off for seven seconds because the computers are checking the performance in the main engine. And if all is well, they give the signal to light the At boosters. Tous radio, and attention up. pour le décompte final. Enjoy the liftoff, everybody. We'll be back after Arian has cleared the tower. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage moteur Vulcan. Allumage des EAP et décollage. Four 
stand up powering her way up through the clouds into the clear sky. You see over the beaches and over the forest here. Our cameraman, uh, Rene Zamora, out on the terrace with, uh, with the guests and with uh, Samir taking these fine shots. Always very impressive. 775 tons is the mass at liftoff as Ariane leaves the ground. We're still being able to follow her by the naked eye. Maybe we'll be able to see the uh, separation of the boosters. The skies are clear enough. She's burning now five tons of fuel every second. That's two and a half tons of fuel in each booster. And the core stage is burning another 300 kilos of fuel per second, roughly equivalent to a dozen Airbuses, if you're keeping score. She's following the program in the onboard computer, which gives all the orders, including all the separations of the stages, which you'll see shortly. The DDO calling out that all is on, on board is okay. We're in the first of four flight phases. The first three are powered. The last isn't. We'll give you a description of each in turn so you can follow Ariane as she heads across the Atlantic, where she'll separate the two satellites. Right now, the first flight phase, the single core stage engine is burning and the two boosters are burning. Boosters will burn in just over two minutes each, and they're the first to be extinguished. You'll hear the DDO call out that milestone as well. All is going well on board. In a few seconds, you'll probably be able to see the flame out of the two boosters on either side. It's not every day that we can see that. There looks like the flame out of the boosters. Separation, Separation of the boosters. You'll see them fall away. Samir is back. Your eyes it are glowing. L like dinner plates, you can see that. Like on my dinner face, plate, uh, I guess it was amazing, Josh. Uh, you know, the two things impressed me. It was the light and the vibration. And you are so close. Uh, that uh, you can feel the uh, feel the you can feel sorry the platform was shaking. Was it really shaking? It was really shaking, and people around were clapping their hands. Everyone was uh, well, it's amazing. <laughs> Super. All right. Thank you for that. You can see uh, the uh, air end continuing to burn. The two boosters have dropped away, done their job. We're into the second of the uh, flight phases now. It's a single engine burning. Samir, now that you're back, I need you to explain. On the left-hand side of the screen, on the upper left, there's a curve, and on the bottom, there's some figures. So on the on the upper left of your screen, you have um, you have a, a curve, sorry, which is giving the prediction. The the, the trajectory was we we have predicted. Okay, the um, fairing has just been separated right on time. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have a white spot. Uh, which is moving uh, into the, the prediction that we have made and which represents the actual position of the launch vehicle. As you can see on your screen, uh, the spot is sticking with the curve, which means that we are so okay. okay. All right, fine. And you have 10 seconds uh, to give us just a brief look at the numbers. Okay, so two important parameters uh, down, uh, down your screen, uh, the E, which is the altitude, and the V, which represents the velocity. And as you can see now, we are at 140 kilometers of altitude and 2.5 kilometers a second of speed. Great, back with more, but for now, the news from Ariane Space. News is in two parts, part one on this year. On November 26, an Ariane 5 delivered two new satellites in another successful double launch, Intelsat 17 for the U.S. and Hylas 1 for Britain. It was the fifth Ariane launch of the year and the 40th straight success for the European launcher. With the recent signature of the contract, for the launch of CICAL-2, we have reached an important stage in the collaboration of Italian industry with Ion Space. As you know, many other Italian satellites have been launched by Ion Space in the past, but I think the launch of CICAL-2, or the signature of the contract that will lead to its launch, will be particularly important. Petro Mateos, chairman of Hispasat, was named Business Leader of the Year. Offered by the Chamber of Commerce of Spain, New York, the award was given for her work linking the two countries through satellite communications. The European Space Agency signed with Ariane Space to launch Sentinel-1A. The two-ton bird will be one of four in the European program called Global Monitoring for Environment and Security and will be launched at the end of 2012 by a Soyuz. Jean-Yves Le Gall was part of a delegation of French industry leaders accompanying the French presidential couple, the Sarkozy's, on an official visit to India and ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, earlier this month. 
And Johnny Legal's message, by the way, was on the importance of India's space program to Europe, since Arian has already launched 15 satellites built by the Indians. That's your home country. Yeah, and I'm very proud of that, Josh. You mentioned that uh, you can see our speed on the lower left is uh, three and a half kilometers per second. How fast do we have to be traveling to separate a satellite? So there's still a long journey for this for the for the, for, sorry, for the stage, I mean, and uh, we need a speed of 9.5 kilometers per second. 9.5 kilometers per second. That's pretty fast. It's okay. really, really fast. So when you see folks, keep your uh, your eyes on the numbers, and when we start approaching eight or nine kilometers per second, you'll know that we are in the general vicinity. Uh, the satellite separation. Six minutes into the launch, we're into the, we're still in the core stage burning. Burns for about to 10 minutes. As promised, part two of the Ariane Space News on next year, big year with the ATV, Soyuz, and Vega. The ATV is so important for the European Space Agency, but not only, also for the other ISS partners, because uh, we are bringing to the station seven tons of cargo and fuel in order to, on one side, support the ISS uh, astronauts and on the other side to reboot the space station, mainly uh, when we are waiting for a very interesting solar max in 2013, so the station has to be reboosted. Uh, what is important also to notice is that uh, the ATV-2 will be the only vehicle able to bring to the station cargo and fuel after the shuttle is retired. So 2011 will be a very important uh, year for uh, ESA launchers because uh, we have the maiden flight of, uh, of Vega, the small uh, launch vehicle. We are now in a crucial phase of big development phase with the final uh, phases on one side with the system qualification review on ground that uh, certifies the ability of the launcher to go in flight. And on the other side, another activity very important that is uh, taking place in these days are the, the exploitation of the combined test. The combined tests are there to simulate uh, all the phases of the assembly and uh, integration of the launch vehicle on the ground base, but also to simulate then the, the launch sequence and, uh, and the launch campaign. So I wish to give uh, to all of you uh, an appointment for next summer. To, to see the first launch of, uh, of this new ESA uh, launch vehicle. And on the Soyuz site, the mobile gantry rollout tests were successfully carried out here in Kourou, as were the technical qualifications of the payload's upper part. The Soyuz launch pad operational qualification is scheduled for next spring, with a maiden launch coming shortly thereafter. About a minute to go, one minute to go in the first stage burn while you were watching uh, the film we were picked up by our first downrange tracking station over the border in Brazil. That's at Natal. Now you, Samir, you work, you work at the tracking station here, which is called Galio. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically we have uh, five crew stations which are tracking the launcher, and during the flight uh, are in sense taking the data to those ground stations, like the speed, the altitude. Constantly. Constantly, constantly exactly, in real time. And we are going to use those data to analyze how the flight is progressing. And that's my job, actually. Uh, during the launch, I'm based at the front station at uh, Galio here in Kourou. Coming up on the extinction of the lower stage, you see how that happens up there. It's ex it's the lower stage burnout, and the lower stage is separated, and the upper stage is ignited. You see now we're burning with a single engine, like the lower stage. All those orders given by the onboard computer in the space of about uh, 13 seconds, extinction of the lower stage, separation, and ignition of the upper stage. All is okay on board. You can see our speed is uh, coming up to 7 kilometers an hour, and our altitude, 178 uh, kilometers. You're watching Ariane Space Flight number 199, Hispasat 1E and Koreasat 6. We are coming up on uh, a look back now on the successful year of 2010. We're going to be hearing from Jacques Breton and Louis Laurent of Ariane Space. 2010 was another excellent year for global market leader Ariane Space. With the details on both the company's commercial side and financials for the year, we spoke with Jacques Breton, Ariane Space's commercial director. This year, Ion Space signed 11 contracts for uh, GTO satellites and the three for non-GTO missions representing seven Soyuz launches. This brings our turnover 
to a little more than 1.3 billion euros, a 13% increase compared to last year. We have already orbited 31 defense oriented satellites for telecommunication and Earth observation, and uh, we still have five to launch in the coming years, SQL 2 being the last one signed. Reading on our quality of service and unmatched reliability, we intend in 2011 to bring our launch service and solutions to even more customers. For the technical side, we go to Louis Laurent, Ariane Space's Director of Programs, for a look at the operational teams responsible for all the launches. The work has been carried out not only by Ariane Space, but also by the different teams involved. CNES, CSG, our Russian partners, and all the European industries involved in North operations. Everyone has shown both the willingness to work over what is traditionally a holiday season, and reactivity in coping with the technical hiccups we've had. We have nonetheless managed to respect the launch schedule, not least thanks to the competence of our European operational teams, probably the best in the world. 2011 promises to be another banner year beginning in February with the ATD, then the maiden launches of Soyuz and Vega. The upper stage burns for about 16 minutes, uh, so about 12 minutes left in the burn. She carries about 12 tons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen. Of course, first stage, by the way, carried about 170, 170 tons. We're into the second half of the mission. We can start uh, focusing on the passengers now. And we have a series of interviews and films uh, coming up on both Hispasat and Koreasat and on the builders. To start us off, we have an interview with Petra Mateos, the president of Hispasat. Once again, Ispasat has chosen Arian Space and its Arian 5 ECA launcher for the launch into orbit of its new satellite, Ispasat 1E. This is the sixth launch carried out with Arian Space and was preceded by the Ispasat 1A and 1B, the Amazonas 2, and through Ispasat, the Star Eur and the Spainsat. In the middle of an important investment process, the Ispasat 1E is the second of the five new satellites laid out in our growth plan. Located at 30 degrees west, the Spasat 1E duplicates our space capacity in this orbital position, to which it adds 53 transponders in KU band and capacity in KU band. The new satellite broadens our coverage over Europe, America, and Africa reinforcing our leadership and our internationalization process. Manufacturer on a LS 1300 platform made by Space System Oral, Ispasat 1 is a very technological advanced and high power satellite that allows Ispasat to increase its selection of high quality services. Ispasat is the leading satellite operator in the broadcast and distribution of content in Spanish and Portuguese. It disseminates and distributes more than 1,150 television and radio channels, including the content of important direct-to-home digital television platforms in Europe as well as in America. In Latin America, Ispasat is now the third most important company by income in its sector. The Ispasat 1E satellite offers capacity over America that reinforces satellite capacity in the region, together with the current satellites, the Amazonas 1 and Amazonas 2. Ispasat's trajectory in recent years has allowed the company to reach levels of profitability and technological development that places it among the most important satellite communication operators. Ispasat is key to the development of the aerospace and telecommunication industry, fomenting its growth with important indirect effects. In addition, Ispasat contributes to the balance of the society through its participation in numerous educational and cultural projects to extend the information society, universalize service, and reduce the digital gap. Last year's experience with the launch of the Amazonas 2 satellite 
with the same Aryan space launcher was very positive. Good luck to all in this new joint project. So we just had the acquisition of our third ground station, which is Ascension, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So it's a small, small island above the equator line. And we are keeping on with our journey. Uh, as you can see, the speed is now of 8 uh, kilometers per second, the altitude uh, about 160 kilometers. So we are traveling. And before we go further on, we'll see a movie on Lowell, who built the spacecraft is passed at 1A. The Hispasat 1E satellite is a large, powerful, 15 kilowatt geocommunication satellite. The coverage extends from Europe to North Africa and to the American continent. The Hispasat 1E satellite design is based on the SSL 1300 bus. The central cylinder is the primary structural element. The propellant tanks are installed within the central cylinder. Other propulsion and structural elements are mounted to the central cylinder. The repeater is integrated and tested on the satellite main communications panels, and these panels are then integrated onto the satellite main body. The top assembly of the satellite includes the antenna tower, the deployable reflectors, and the solar arrays. The ISPASAT 1E satellite uh, will offer new services uh, for the DH uh, platforms, for the terrestrial uh, television and also for high-definition television as well as broadband services. Seven minutes to go in the upper stage burn, seven minutes of power left in the mission. Tell us a little more, uh, Samir, on the upper stage, some of its characteristics, what it does. Mm -hmm. So unlike the main stage, it burns a cryogenic propellant um, every second. It's burning about 15 kilograms of hydrogen and oxygen. And to give you some more numbers. Sorry, we just had, I was interrupted because we just had the acquisition of the fourth we'll be station. Back. We'll be back with you right now, an interview in Korean with Mr. Ho Ek Suk, Vice Chair of KT Corp. KT를대표해서동영상으로인사를드립니다지난3년동안콜레로제작과정에서라큘라지진옐로탱크교체등여러가지우여곡절이있었다고보고받았습니다하지만위성체공동제작사인프랑스의달레스알레니아스페이스와
중동과 동아, 동남아시아 지역에서도 서비스를 제공할 수 있는 기반을 마련했습니다. 앞으로도 KT는 지속적으로 위성 사업을 강화해서 세계적인 사업자로 도약하도록 노력할 것입니다. 저를 비롯한 이번 위성 발사와 관련된 주요 고객사들도 파리 상황실에서 여러분과 마찬가지로 발사 상황을 생중계로 지켜보고 있습니다. 저는 이번 올해 1호 위성 발사가 반드시 성공해서 함께 축배를 들기를 기원합니다. 여러분 감사합니다. Arian performing flawlessly. Senator, take us back to Galileo now. The data is coming in constantly on your screen. What do you do with it? So all the data, you know, are connected to Galileo. So now we just had the acquisition by Libreville, the Ford Crown Station uh, in Gamo, West Coast Africa. And then they are going to uh, be sent to Galileo. And where the head of the CBE is going to gather all the information in real time and send it here uh, in uh, Kuru and back there in every. Okay, back with more, but for now a film on KT Corporation. What cool is that? The start of a new challenge to change the world. The path traveled by KT represents the evolution of ICT in Korea. KT has fueled major advances in information and communication technologies in Korea. From fixed line telephone to high speed internet, to the world's first commercial WCDMA and WIBO services. Communication satellite and submarine optical cable, KT delivers innovative and unparalleled services. KT is also the leader in service quality and customer satisfaction, ranking first in Korea's prominent customer surveys. KT is always thinking of the customer as we prepare for the era of a global ICT convergence. Thinking outside the box reflects the spirit of Ole KT. KT's new management paradigm, Olin Management. Rethinking conventional ideas. Managing to usher in the era of convergence. Communicating to promote engagement and openness. Satisfying customers beyond their expectations. KT is geared up for a new beginning. Our target is to emerge as the global ICT convergence leader. KT is exploring untraveled roads with endless challenge and passion. KT will become a world-class telecommunications company worthy of love and respect. Less than a minute left in the upper stage. Senator, I'm just curious. I just have one last question about Galileo. How many are you? Up there? So we have four there, and uh, we have four computers. Each computer is uh, giving a uh, different kind of information. You know, one computer is more specialized with uh, propulsion aspects, one with uh, maneuvers, uh, and one with trajectory, for example. And this is the computer I'm behind uh, when I'm at uh, La Montagne des Pères. So the trajectory computer, for example, is giving the differences that we can have uh, in altitude and in speed. So this is just a constant stream of numbers? The you have numbers and you also have some curves showing the evolution of the, the trajectory. trajectory. Trajectory tonight is normal. Everything is normal. You can see our speed is 9 kilometers per second. We're coming up uh, to separation time. But first we will have the extinction, the burnout of the upper stage. And then we'll be into the final uh, flight phase, which is not powered. The fourth... Uh, Extinction de l'étage supérieur cryotechnique sur commande de guidage. There it is. They see, you see how the uh, engine shutting down there. So we're now into the fourth flight phase. Uh, no more power. But a lot is happening. Début de la phase balistique. And we're going to get a, uh, an explanation of that from Samir. But first... Arian Space and his beside old friends, a film now on this relationship. Début de la manœuvre de l'orientation. 
Ariane Space launched the first Hispasat in 1992. That was Hispasat 1A. And today's mission is the sixth for the two partners. In between, the European launch of vehicles successfully orbited Hispasat 1B in 1993, X Star in 2005, Spain Sat the year after, and Amazonas 2 most recently last October. Ariane Space and Hispasat go back a long way. The launch services integration is indeed a long run activity. For the specific case of Hispasat 1A, we started almost two years prior to launch. Each time, similar conditions and qualities must come into play. Each launch follows a similar pattern overall. However, each satellite is different. This means area and space must carefully respect and meet each client's specific needs. Because it is essentially multidisciplinary, this activity requires mainly being organized and accurate in order to make sure that all Ariane Spaces and customers' requirements are taken into account appropriately and timely. This launch of Hispasat 1E shows the close relationship the Spanish operator maintains with Ariane Space. A final word now from Antonio Abad, Satellite Mission Director for Hispasat 1E. The Hispasat 1E satellite is a 13 kilowatt uh, satellite with uh, 53 DK1 transponders covering Europe, Africa and the Americas. It also has K1 capacity. The high power of the transponders and the dedicated design antennas provide high level of ERP and URT that allow us to provide high quality and cost efficient application and services to our customers. The Spanish industry has played a very important role in the construction of the satellite. We're due to have separation of Hispasat in a few short seconds. A very emotional moment now, all eyes on the computers. And, and there we are, the first good news. Happy faces, thumbs up. Hispasat, uh, the first passenger separated. You see the uh, people holding their applause very politely in the hall here until separation of the second satellite. She's pushed away from the mothership by a spring, a series of springs. Yeah, those springs are uh, mounted all around the, the adapter. And they the allowed the spacecraft to be pushed away. Over now to uh, Antonio Abad, Satellite Mission Director for uh, his beside. He's going to talk about IoT positioning. That means in-orbit testing. After the satellite is separated from the launchers, we will deploy the solar array panels providing power to the satellite and recharging the batteries. A series of four apogee firing maneuvers will be performed to increase the perigee of the orbit up to the geostationary height. Once we are in geostationary orbit, we will set the satellite to earth pointing mode and we will deploy the antennas. After that, we will insert the satellite in the IoT position using several trimming maneuvers. Once the satellite is in the IoT position, we will perform an extensive set of tests both at payload and platform level to demonstrate that the satellite has survived to the launch. After that, we will position the satellite in 30 degrees west and we will initialize the collocation strategy of the satellite with the other satellites in the orbital position. Finally, the satellite will be ready to provide high quality and satisfactory services to our customers for 15 years of its lifetime. So we're out of the uh, powered phases. We're in what they call the ballistics phase. A lot is happening. Uh, maybe you can give us an explanation. Yes, yeah, so now uh, you can see on the screen right now that there are uh, lots of uh, maneuvers which are happening. There are some movement. The, the, body, the upper body is making some movement. Seems to be moving clockwise. Yes. Uh, it's because, you know, uh, all the bodies that we are going to separate it needs different kind of direction and we also uh, want to avoid any risk from collision. This is why now you have some uh, move uh, around and you just have the separation of uh, the black box, which is the same that on the screen. That's the carrying structure, which allows us to have a second passenger. You can see Korea set facing the elements now, the blue box. So the SILDA goes in another direction, the two satellites have to go in two other directions mm -hmm. to avoid collisions. Koreasat 6 will replace Koreasat 3, which was of course launched by Ariane back in 1999. Another uh, faithful customer riding second tonight. And we have 
a film now, another uh, film. You'll be hearing from Marianne Space's Verhoer Loiseau, who's the program director for Korea Sat 6. <laughs> It was in 2008 that Korea Telecom chose Arian Space to launch its satellite CareerSat 6. Most Arian Space launches like tonight are double launches carrying international passengers, and like this one, they're usually a mix of different cultures. This reflects the global space community of which Asia and Korea are now major players. Korea Telecom, Korea Telecom has once again placed its trust in us. We already launched CareerSat 3, which is soon to be replaced by CareerSat 6. KoreaSat-6 is the third satellite launched by Ariane Space for South Korea after KoreaSat-3 and COMS-1 launched last June. It's the second for Korea Telecom, who now is another regular customer for Ariane Space. KT has been very pleased with the contract discussion with the Ariane Space and they showed a great cooperation with the several manufacturers, Paris Ariane Space and Orbital Science Corporation, and the way the campaign has been conducted. Providing reliable launch service and solutions for Korea and the Asia-Pacific region is how Ariane Space contributes to achievements in space. Customers like Korea Telecom appreciate this successful cooperation. Ariane Space has been known to be a free, eminent launch service provider in this industry. Ariane Launch Vehicle has more than 95% of reliability and 40 times consecutive launch success. That is only main criteria to choose our airspace mainly for their reliability record and the commitment to launch on time. Before we go to our final film on Korea, we have just a minute, but we have time for the quiz question. Are you ready? Uh, actually, I was not prepared, but I'm well, you're ready. Prepared. Just, you're prepared. I'm not sure if I get it. You're prepared. <laughs> Arian Space Quiz Question Number 199. This is the first time Arian has been able to launch between the holidays, I mean after Christmas and before New Year's. We've come close to a Christmas launch before, but never after Christmas. Can you name the date when the closest we came to launching to Christmas in the past? Now, anybody at Arian Space should be able to get this one. You've been with Air and Space how long? Five years. You have an idea? Um, I guess I have an idea. Hold on to it. Hold on to I'm it. We'll, it. Hold on to it. We'll look at it. Uh, we'll ask you after the film, our final film, on how Korea Sat 6 will be positioned. After separation, the Serret will be acquired by the Mission Operations Control Center at Dallas, Virginia, by the Orbital Science Team. The third will go to state test test and then be the cruising editor. For LA burns are planned to raise the orbit, reduce the inclination to geosynchronous orbit. The solar arrays and refractors will be deployed next. After that, the spacecraft will go to bus and payload in orbit testing before commencing service. After successful completion of in orbit testing, we expect the third to be operational by January 2011. Okay, coming up on separation of KoreaSat in just, just about a minute, just about a minute. Talk about the uh, mass profile now. The, uh, we, left off, we lifted off with 775 tons, and now we're down to how much? Now we have, uh, so I don't know the exact mass now, but what I can see uh, is that uh, at the end of the propulsion phase, we were 26 uh, tons. Uh, that means the ESC, of course. Uh, the VLE, which is the brain of uh, the launcher, uh, the two adapters, the two satellites, the carrying ship, so, uh, so you know, uh, if we make a comparative ratio uh, between the payload mass and the propellant mass, it's less than one person. Very good. Okay, you see, we uh, have the applause from the, from the crowd here, very appreciative from the uh, separation of our second passenger, Ariane 5, once again delivering, handshakes all around, as you can see, hugs, and you see Korea set up there being pushed away from the mothership, beginning her life. She too will uh, have four Apogee motor firings on the first, third, fifth, and seventh day. She'll be picked up by uh, Australian station, the first signal, at 57 minutes after launch, and beginning her payload turn on in 11 days. Did you get the answer to the quiz question, by the way? Well, I guess it's the 24th of December. The 24th of December, the, the closest launch. we came to the Christmas launch. Well done. Thanks, Josh. Well done. Now, if, if you hadn't got that, I think you'd be hitchhiking back to uh, I, you I, should know that I know, I know. I was really scared when you asked me the question and told me that everyone should know that. But you, uh, you did very well. <laughs> the, very first, the very first Air and Space launch, Christmas Eve 1979. So anybody got that, give yourselves a round of applause, and you get to watch a replay for the launch, which is coming up. Maybe one or two replays. 
Here's the first replay for all you contest winners. We are still waiting for our replay, which I think will be coming up shortly. In the meantime, we are preparing... Here's your replay. Replay. Was watching the replay like the real thing? Uh, it's, uh, it's totally different. You don't have <laughs> the vibration. I expect so. We're waiting for the uh, podium to be set up. The post-launch speeches. We'll be hearing, of course, from Jean-Yves Legal, Curian Space's Chairman and Chief Executive. And then we'll be hearing from Petra Mateus of Hispasat, I believe, by video, by video link. Also from Mr. Sungman Kim of uh, Koreasat, of uh, Koreasat. We, uh, I see Jean-Yves Legal making his way to the podium. He is ready to speak. Mr. Legal, you have the floor when you are ready. As you've just seen, this sixth launch of Ariane 5 in 2010 comes just one month after our last launch. And I'm delighted to tell you that Hispasat 1E and Koreasat 6 have been placed into geostationary transfer orbit. In fact, it's the 41st consecutive success of Ariane 5, and in 2010 we will have launched a total of 12 large telecommunications satellites out of a world total of 20. And you can work it out for yourselves. This gives us a market share of 60%. So first of all, I would like to uh, thank particularly warmly our customers and above all those of you who come from Spain and Korea to uh, join us here at the Guiana Space Center for this further success. Our customer Hispasat, behind the Hispasat 1E spacecraft, has since 1992 been a very special partner of Ariane Space. We in fact launched the very first Hispasat satellite in 1992, that was Hispasat 1E. So we're particularly proud to share this new success with our Spanish customer, and I'd like to thank um, particularly my friend uh, Petra Mateos, who's the uh, Chairman Executive Officer of Hispasat. She's joined us from afar for the launch, and I'd like to thank her for the continuing trust and uh, uh, loyalty. Her success as the CEO of Hispasat is acknowledged throughout the world. Uh, at the very start of the month, um, Madame Mateus received in New York the prestigious award Leader of the Year, and I'd like to ask you to join with me in applauding her. Congratulations. I'd also like to thank John Celli, who was behind me here. He's the president of Space Systems Laurel. He's with us this evening. And... Uh, we have asked him in under one month to provide us with two large telecom satellites, Intelsat 17 and Hispasat 1E. Both of them were put into orbit by Ariane 5. As for Koreasat 6, it's actually the second spacecraft that we're putting into orbit for KT Corporation after Koreasat 3 in 1999. And it's also the second satellite that we launched for South Korea in 2010 because a few months back we launched COMS. It's a great honor for us to accompany the development of the uh, Korean space program, and we're very proud that KT Corporation has once again placed its trust in us. I'd particularly like to thank Mr. Song Man Kim for his decision to launch Koreasat 6 with Ariane Space. And the success of this evening goes to show how right he was. I'd also like to thank Telus uh, Linear Space and Orbital Sciences Corporation, the manufacturers of Koreasat 6. I'd also like to congratulate all of those who've contributed to this new success of Ariane 5, the member states of the European Space Agency, for the support they provide to the Ariane program, and this is something they've shown once again recently. Thanks also to the CNES back in France and here at the CSG, 
thank you to our industrial partners who manufacture Ariane 5. And I would obviously very much like to thank the Ariane Space Operational Team for their flexibility, reactivity, and availability. And I'd like to thank them particularly for the passion they put into their work. It's thanks to this that we have managed to keep our promises. These people have been working with grit and determination to reach our objectives. And once again, they have proved that they are doubtless the best operational team in the world. And I'd like to thank you to congratulate them for me. And here, after the sixth launch of 2010, coming between Christmas and the New Year, and I can tell you, in fact, this is the first time in 30 years that this has happened, and I hope that uh, it won't happen again. Anyhow, I'd like to uh, congratulate and thank all of those uh, in Europe and in French Guiana who have made it possible for us to succeed uh, with this launch. And I'd also like to say that uh, we can continue to satisfy our customers uh, this evening, but also look to the 15th of February launch of the ATV journalist Kepler. We can say that our customers uh, have been right in their choices because in, the, in total in 2010 we've uh, signed uh, 12 further contracts for spacecraft launches uh, going up into geostationary orbit on Ariane 5. That's a total of 18 in the world. That gives us a 67% uh, market share. So you can see that uh, year after year we are still the leader of the pack. And it's our success, it's also the success of the uh, Guiana Space Center. At this point, I think uh, we should hear from our customers, beginning with Petra Mateos for his Passat and Mr. Sung Man Kim for CareerSat. Yes, ma'am, of his Passat, it is a tremendous source of satisfaction to announce the launch of our new communication satellite, the ISPASAT 1E. As we speak, the new satellite turns around the Earth and is proceeding all by itself to carry out the necessary maneuvers to reach its definitive geostationary orbit at more than 36,000 kilometers over the equator. The Spasat 1E allows our company to expand its capacity and coverage over Europe, America, and Africa, and reinforce its position of leadership and its internationalization process. My thanks to all who have contributed with their efforts to the success of this mission. In first place, the launcher. Thank you, Janine. Once again, the contribution of Arian Space to the project of the ISPASAT Group has produced not worthy results, confirming its much deserved and recognized prestige. To a space system oral, which has helped make an ambitious and complex idea like the construction of the ISPASAT-1 satellite in reality. My congratulations also to the Spanish space industry. ISPASAT maintains its commitment to the Spanish space industry and it is a source of pride to work alongside companies such as IADS Casa, Tales Alenia Space España, RIMSA, Iberespacio, GMV and INDRA. I also congratulate the team at Korea Telecom for the launch of the Korea Subsea Satellite, our companion in this area of flight 199. ISPASAT always maintains as a priority objective providing the best services to its clients. Thanks to all of the professionals that work in ISPASAT who with their efforts, enthusiasm, and dedication make it possible for us to continue to grow as a company and to continue to serve as an example of service quality, innovation, and technological excellence. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sun Man Kim, Senior Executive Vice President of KP. At this moment, I am extremely pleased to give a congratulatory speech 
on the occasion of the successful launch of the CoreaSat 6 satellite. On behalf of KT, I would like to express my appreciation for the great efforts of Ariane Space, CoreaSat, and ESA that have made all this successful on-time launch to meet year-end launch, launch time limit. Your team did a very good job to complete all necessary integration and assembly activities, working at midnight and even sacrificing your Christmas holiday. I also would like to deliver my special thanks to Thales Alenia Space and Orbital Science Corporation for their harmonized works that they have built a good quality spacecraft. I think thus OSC teamwork of this program was very much impressive. And I hope your team would continuously pay high attention to the su successful deployment of Corset 6 satellite at its designated orbital location. Lastly, I would like to give my sincere gratitude to our loyal customer, Skylife, which is the number one DTH service provider in Korea. Corset 6 is a replacement of Corset 3 and it will be used for high quality HD and 3D broadcasting services for more than 3 million households in Korea. Once again, I appreciate all your efforts. Let's have a green try for celebrating this successful launch. Thank you very much. Well, thank you once again, and congratulations to everybody. As I said earlier, the next launch is on the 15th of February. It'll be a somewhat uh, extraordinary launch. It'll be the launch of the ATV up to the International Space Station. And between now and then, I hope that uh, the end of this year, 2010, is as enjoyable for you as it has been for us this evening. And I wish you all, to you and those who are close to you, a very happy new year. Any last words? Uh, thank you, Josh. Uh, it was uh, a pleasure to be here with you tonight. And uh, I'm uh, still uh, under my emotions after having been uh, outside for the launch. Good, good. On these uh, last replay shots, where you can relive those emotional moments that you had, we will say goodbye. 55 launches, 41 straight, 33 dual launches, 74 payloads with six launches this year, 12 satellites, and an additional six global stars put up by Soyuz in October. Ariane Space ends a banner year. Next year, proving will prove to be just as big. 15th of February, the ATV-2, which will begin another year for Ariane Space with Soyuz and Vega coming to the CSG. You won't want to miss that one. Until then, Joshua Jappel with Samir Amaji. Thanks for being with us. We hope you enjoyed it. Have a happy and a safe new year. Goodbye.